Hello, it is Saturday, December 9th, 2023. I'm Chris Remo and welcome back to the New York Times Crossword Daily Solve. It's a Saturday crossword today, which means we're likely in for a tricky, themeless crossword. Maybe the trickiest puzzle of the week, themeless or otherwise. That's often what we get on Saturday. Let's find out if it's the case today. And this likely tricky edition of the Daily Solve has been brought to us by Quotidia File, Overfull Hitbox, and a new benefactor. So welcome to Michael. Thank you so much for joining the Daily Solve Patreon campaign at that generous level. I really do appreciate it. And Michael will, of course, be receiving the Daily Solve Let's Check the Crosses mug in good time as a result of that. So thank you to him for joining up this um, video is brought to you by the three of them, as well as, as always, of course, the indomitable Showmaster and the incredible Horan family. Those five are benefactors of the channel, which means they do support this series and sustain this channel generally. And I'm really appreciative of that. And uh, if you, as I am, to the efforts of all for the efforts of all the patrons of, of any level, and if you'd like to directly support this channel, you can head over to patreoncom solve where you can find all of the bonus videos available to patrons, as well as that aforementioned mug. So thank you again to everybody there. There's uh, also the Daily Solve Discord chat server, which you can join via a description field link. And it's a nice friendly chat community to check it out. And finally, it's a big help if you subscribe to the channel on YouTube, interact with the videos in various ways, such as liking them or leaving comments. Uh, those things are all uh, little bits of help that contribute to the channel spreading. So thank you if you've done any of those things. All right, let's get on to the actual puzzle, shall we? This is a, a collaborative construction by Doug Peterson, who's constructed, I believe, more than 50 puzzles for the New York Times, and Christina Iverson, who's constructed a couple of dozen. So both experienced constructors, welcome back to them, and it was edited, as always, by Will Shorts. So let's start solving, see how we manage with this one. Try not to attract attention. Be discreet. It's not long enough, but um, I, I don't know. Uh, blend in. I, I can't think of anything long enough just offhand. This and that. Miscellaneous, but it would have to be abbreviated, which isn't indicated in the clue, so I don't think so. Geographical inspiration for Strauss. So the, the Blue Danube, the famous um, waltz, which was used memorably in um, 2001, A Space Odyssey, the Stanley Kubrick, Stanley Kubrick film, as well as plenty of other films and cartoons and things, I think. So anyway, there we go. Disney Channel. Um, Disney owns ABC, the television network, and I think, I think officially their abbreviation might be ABC TV. Uh, I think this. I think this is probably right. Does that help me with this? Try not to attract attention. Um, act. Act natural. There we go. There we go. That's a common phrase. All right, good. So then what about this? The nutcracker. Oh, Clara is the, um, the little girl in the nutcracker who is transported to the fantasy land. That is a great, great suite of music, isn't it? Uh, one pulling some strings. A tuner, maybe. All right. Someone tuning, I don't know, anything, a guitar, a violin, a piano, anything with strings. Long part of a bazooki. It's neck. That's a that's a string instrument as well. So maybe that's what they're tuning. And then big deals could be a dues. Uh, safaris, e.g., are treks, so sort of, you know, um, I guess, sort of adventurous voyages or something. Maybe you could you could call them not standard. Could be various. There we go. Or a variety. Probably various, because standard is an adjective, and so is various. Or varied, maybe. I'm not sure. In any case, something, <laughs> some word like that. 100% correct. Can confirm. There we go. I can confirm that is the answer to this clue. And here we have Amy, who wrote The Kitchen God's Wife. It must be Amy Tan. I haven't I haven't read that one. I read The Joy Luck Club, which is, I'm, I'm sure, by far her most, most widely read novel. Uh, played out could be... Played out un. I'm thinking this means sort of uncool or un. Fresh. I don't know. I, I can't think what this is. Dig locale. So you could have an archaeological dig in historical ruins, and then not here could be abroad, so overseas. Fish, also known as wahoo. Oh. 
I think this is a fish that's very frequently imitated fraudulently, but I'm not sure what this, uh, is it, oh no, I'm not sure actually, played out, un, hmm, what about this, border region along the Rhine, Alsace, there we go, there we go, In France, okay, so un, played out, Is it being used as a verb? If someone played you out, they... No, I don't think that's right. I think it's probably an adjective. Hmm. UN Secretary General Guterres. Oh, um, uh, Antonio Guterres, yeah. Okay, there we go, UN Secretary General. Uh, the current one. A bit of assistance. A hand, if you lend a hand you're lending a bit of assistance. So what is going on with this? Oh, pl oh no, no, right. Okay. It is, it was, it is a verb. It's sort of a past participle. So something, it has played out. It has unfolded. There we go. Okay. Yeah. For some reason, I just couldn't, couldn't think of that meaning of played out. I don't really know why. I was thinking of it either as um, played out in the sense of trite or overused, or in the sense of playing somebody out musically. I don't know, you know, in other words, you have music playing as someone is leaving. I don't know why that was my my second thought as to the sense of this phrase, but unfolded being the events played out. That's a much more common usage. Anyway, what might be heard before a bust? I don't know. Is it, I don't know if this is a sort of cryptic reference to, to gambling as in, you know, bust in blackjack or something, or if it means an explosion, or maybe a bust, like a drug bust. Maybe this is something that law enforcement would yell, perhaps. What else? What else could this mean? It's three meanings. I don't know. Run like a mouse to skitter. Mouses sort of skitter along, don't they? So what might be heard before a bust? Hit me. Oh, right. Okay, it is. It was. Blackjack or, or something similar. Okay, there we go. You could hit me, you could get a card, it would put you over 21 and then you and you bust. Okay, great. I think that's probably the answer. Pleased with that. Did some shallow breathing. Shallow breathe. Snorkeled. There we go. So snorkeling is obviously, you know, you have the the breathing tube, but it's it's not very long, so you it's a fair you can only do it in a fairly shallow water. Or at least you can only be fairly fairly shallow, I suppose. Bootlicker's specialty. So kissing up, so kind of appealing to authority, being subservient to authority. Uh, most of the English force at Agincourt. Uh, Bowman, famously. Okay, so this, right, is this not this then? Oh, kowtowing. Right, okay, fair enough. Um, another, surprisingly, another valid, I think, answer, starting with a K, in the same number of letters. That's pretty surprising, but also valid. You could kowtow, you could exactly similarly sort of just fall in line subserviently. Okay, anyway, most of the English force at Agincourt are, were, were bowmen, famously, the English archers, the Battle of Agincourt. Uh, here we have pillar of the superhero community. No idea what this is referring to. Um, pill, is it, is it something punny and it's a, you know, is it not, my first thought was it would be a particularly famous superhero, like Superman or Batman or Spider-Man or something, but I'm wondering if it's going to be read in a punny way and it's literally a pillar, like a column that has some resonance in the world of superheroes, but I'm not sure. Goddess of the Loud Hunt in Homer's Iliad, um, Artesia, I would think. Goddess of the, of the Loud Hunt. That sounds right to me. So what about this? Stab. No, no, Artemis. Artemis, sorry. Artemis, of course. Wow, that was a complete brain malfunction there. Artemis is, of course, the goddess of the hunt. Okay. So, and then goddess of the Loud Hunt. This must be one of the, um, you get these, uh, oh, what are they called? I don't remember. But you get these, these repeated, these ways that, particular characters are referred to through this 
whole little sort of fragment, this, this whole collection of words. And there are these poetic references and they occur again and again and again and again um, in the Odyssey and the Iliad, for instance. Anyway, I, 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 that must be one for Artemis. I've read the Odyssey. I've not, I've not actually read the Iliad. So, um, okay, stab is an attempt. There we go. You take an attempt at something. You take a stab at it. Good. Okay. Pillar of the superhero community. Not sure. MMA decision. Uh, I don't know anything about MMA. I mean, I know it's mixed martial arts. I assume that it also has a technical knockout. Um, I just have to assume that to be the case because I don't have a better guess. And it seems pretty plausible to me. So, ba oh, <laughs> Pil it, okay, I think it is a literal pillar, a literal uh, rod in this case, the bat pole. Um, I have no idea what the sort of origin of the bat pole is in the comics world. I, I just know it as represented in the 1960s Batman series, which I think I mentioned yesterday or the day before, but I will mention again, is absolutely excellent. And it was released on Blu-ray several years ago in a beautiful restoration. And it just looks absolutely gorgeous. And it's incredibly good and really worth watching if you just want something very fun and incredibly clever and self-aware. And anyway, the bat pole, they would, uh, Batman and Robin would slide down the bat pole when, when called. All right, Northern Lapwing. I don't know, there's some sort of insect or something? I don't think I recognize this. Pewit, I don't know. I mean, it looks like it's going to be an eye or something, but I don't, I don't recognize the word. Fiction, yeah, it is an eye. Fictional Dr. Jones, familiarly, would be Indiana Jones, Indy. And then Swedish actress Lena Olin, I certainly recognize. Oops. Make advances would be to lend money. You could advance money to somebody. And then a tense situation could be an edgy situation. Great. So there we go. We figured that out. So this is the Pewit. Yeah, not, not a word I recognize, but there we have it. All right. Uh, Pulitzer category is... Uh, so different, different forms of art or journalism are, are recognized. And what would this one be? I don't know why, but I can't, I just can't think. I don't know. Heavenly being could be, I'm not sure. Maguire of 2009's Brothers. I have never seen this, but Toby Maguire is an actor who in 2009, I would have imagined would have been in films. So maybe. Does that help me with this? Pulitzer category. Why can I not see what this is? It's, it's bizarre. All right. Break down in a way. Rot as in food. It breaks down. It rots or organic matter generally. Uh, and then here we have break down in a way. It could be parse maybe. You break down, you know, if you sort of break down a sentence or a complex idea, you parse it. Rot is easier because it's only three letters and it has an O. So let's, but let's look at this one. Big deal. Not sure. Many a North African... Um, many a North African, I'm trying to think of a country, a North African country that would fit here. I can't really think of any. Oh, but it could be Arab. Obviously the Arab world overlaps with North Africa. Okay. That must, that must be the answer. That's a, that's a perfectly sensible fill there. Idaho Senator Mike. Ooh, not sure. U.S. politics clue, obviously. I'm not, I, don't, I might recognize the name when I see it, but I'm not sure off the top of my head. It's a good thing. An asset is something you own that's positive, either in a sort of metaphorical sense or a literal financial asset. Spot check. A vet something. I'm wondering if a spot is referring to a dog. It's kind of a stereotypical dog name. So I'm wondering if this is a sort of vet checkup or something, but I'm not sure what it would be. Part of UCSF, that's UC, uh, University of California at San Francisco, um, which is sort of an unusual school in the University of California system because I think it's, I think it's only a graduate school. I don't think there's an undergraduate component. I could be wrong about that. But I always remember UCSF being sort of an odd, one of the odd ones out in the UC system. I went to another UC system school, UC uh, Berkeley. So that's how I, that's why I sort of have this in my head. Anyway, 
part of it, all, it doesn't, none of that matters to solving the clue. Uh, all we need to do is put in sand, which is what the S stands for. Although, maybe it isn't. Because that says abbreviation. Hmm, maybe that's not part of UCSF. No, I guess it isn't the S. Sorry, I, I just took it for granted that it was, but that's not abbreviating anything. Okay, it must be Cal for California. Right, okay, sorry, I just, I put that in on autopilot and then at least I noticed it before I kept, before I, I, I kept going elsewhere. But basically the idea here is that uh, we, this is an abbreviation. So you might think, oh, well, it's just referring to the fact that, so I'll select it up here. This must just be referring to the fact that UCSF itself is an abbreviation, but no, it's not. It's saying the answer must be an abbreviation and SAN isn't an abbreviation, it's an entire word whereas California can be abbreviated to Cal, so it goes in there. Sorry, I know I over-explained that, but I was just <laughs> taken by surprise, so. Okay, Idaho Senator Mike, yeah, still don't, still don't recognize it. Spot check, I don't recognize that either. Okay, chance to start fresh. Um, not sure. 19th century garb completed by top hats and gloves. 19th century garb. Oh, I'm not sure. I don't know. Yeah, maybe maybe I'll recognize when I see it. I'm not sure. Let's have our cake and eat it too. Why not both? There we go. That is what that slightly odd <laughs> phrase I've always thought refers to, but there we go. Idaho Senator Mike. Oh, it's not, not giving me anything else. Spot check. Oh, a leash. Right. Because in the sense that you're, you could keep your dog in check by having them on a leash or a lead. Uh, there we go, all right, good. Big deal, a pact maybe, right? A, a deal, but you know, sort of agreement between countries, for instance, could be a pact, a big deal. People with a language of the same name, Lao, I would think in three letters ending with O. Um, the people and the language, there we go. Chance to start fresh. Yeah, this this area over here is just mystifying to me. Oh, opera capes are 19th century garb completed by top hats and gloves. There we go. There we go. Um, in my brain forever, I think is a is a bit from Seinfeld with Larry David, the creator of Seinfeld, as a character in an opera cape. Um, anyway, Idaho Senator Mike. I, I, I'm pretty sure at this point I'm not going to recognize this name. Okay, so what else can we get? Use a hitch on to tow a, a vehicle, to, to hitch it to a, a tow truck, for instance. Chance to start fresh. Tabula rasa, there we go. Blank, literally blank slate. Okay, so then here's uh, Idaho Senator Mike Crapo, maybe. I don't, I don't recognize the name. Okay, words to end a play. Oh, your turn. Not a I was thinking of play in the theatrical sense, but it's not. It's in a game. You could be playing, you know, a board game with something, and then you could say, oh, your turn. My, you know, my play, my turn has ended. Okay, so Pulitzer category. Pastry? What am I missing here? Uh, heavenly being. Oh, no, it isn't that. Uh, seraph, an angel. Okay. Oh, poetry. Oh, oh, Antonio. Did I say Antonia? I'm sure I said Antonio Guterres. And I must have just, I sometimes do that. I'll say one thing and then type a different one. I, yeah, just completely missed that. Sorry. Anyway, uh, Pulitzer category is poetry. There we go. That finally makes sense. It just that threw me off for ages. Quick, and it was my own fault. Quick could be choppy or no. Um, I don't know. This looks like not too... Oh, I haven't read the clue yet. Defiant declaration popularized by the drag queen Bianca Del Rio. Not today something? I don't know. I don't know the rest, but it certainly looks like not today. I mean, that sounds... That's a defiant beginning of a phrase anyway. Word with data or deal. Raw data, raw deal. There we go. Itchy layers could be wool something. I mean, wool can certainly be itchy. Wool... Woolens? 
It's just sort of woolen goods, maybe? Not sure. I'll try and remember that this part isn't necessarily certain, but the wool I'm, I'm confident about. Quick could be still not sure. Locale for ping pong, foosball, dancing, etc. A rec center, a, a rec hall, maybe? A recreational hall, a rec center, that sort of thing. Maybe, sort of leisure center. Shell-inspired shade of greenish blue. I don't know, this might be wrong. Founder of the Shondaland Production Company. Um, Shonda Rhymes, so Rhymes, her surname, there we go. The uh, television, you know, incredibly successful television producer and her production company. Quick, crafty, or, I mean, it could be, it could be quick in the sense of intelligent or quick on one's feet, but I'm still just not seeing it for some reason. Okay. What about this? Safari destinations. Oh, right. Okay. I think we had safari in the, in a different sense referenced elsewhere. We had safari. Oh, right. We had safaris or treks here. We have safari, the web browser. So destinations could be websites uh, identified by URLs, uniform resource locators. And then quick. Oh, a cursory as in a quick glance at some materials, a cursory glance. There we go. Great. So does that help me with this? Shell-inspired shade of greenish blue. Duck something? Not sure. Oh, but toys, yeah, to it is, because toys with strings are kites. So do I know this? Duck egg. Oh, duck egg. Right. That's what it means by shell-inspired. The shell of an egg has inspired this shade of greenish blue. Duck egg. Very good. Okay. I've probably encountered that before. Certainly not part of my, my active daily vocabulary. Epithet for Tarzan. The ape man is how he was often called. Oh, not today, Satan. There we go. Okay. So, I mean, I've heard that as a phrase in general. I'm not familiar with it in the specific context, but there we go. Certainly a phrase. Causes to grow humorously. If one causes something to grow, one, I'm not sure. This and that. I, I don't know. This one feels like I should be able to just get it, but I can't. Alas. Ah, me? That's a, that's a sort of quaint... Alas is sort of a quaint way to express dismay, and ah, me is also kind of a quaint way to express dismay. So I think I think that's probably right. That, um, that matches. Tab, essentially. A soda? And tab is a, is a... You don't see it very much, but what else? Tab key, a computer key, a tab in a web browser. I'm not sure. Play again. Oh, to re-air something on the radio or television. You play it again. Re-air it. Blank championship PGA, maybe? Um, golf golf tournament? Not sure. Sounds plausible. Let's see. Causes to grow human. Oh, embiggens. Right. <laughs> Which I think, I, think I think derives from The Simpsons um, originally. I think I think that's probably probably the answer. Let's see. Car washing equipment. Something rags. So that would be PGA. I mean, yeah, you could wash a car with you could use rags to wash a car or other things. And then tab essentially Oh, debt. All right. Your tab at a bar would be essentially debt. All right. So that essentially was important because these things aren't literally straight synonyms, but a tab essentially is Debt, it's money you owe. Okay, that's good. This and that. Oh, item? An item? I don't think that's right. First Nigerian-born singer to win a Grammy. First Nigerian-born singer to win a Grammy. Uh, must be Sade, uh, which I don't, I, I don't know that I knew that particular sort of record off the top of my head, but well done. And then this and that. Oh, stew. Ah, okay. There we go. A, a stew is kind of this or that. You could say, oh, metaphorically, this is, a, you know, it's a big sort of stew of different people or experiences or whatever, this and that. And then wet rags or car wash, washing equipment. Exactly right. So there we go. All right. Well, this was not a brutally difficult puzzle necessarily, but it was tricky, I think. It was tricky throughout. It was one of these, and this is, you know, it's what I like in a in a um, a uh, themeless crossword. You know, there's there's sort of a, 
a back and forth, a give and take throughout the puzzle. You have to kind of, you're not going to be able to just put everything in immediately off the top of your head. So you do have to sort of go back and forth, figure some things out, you know, get some crosses, come back. I mean, it, it requires some active, active solving. And I certainly found that to be the case today. And, uh, and there we have it. A nice, themeless Saturday crossword that I think fits into the, the Saturday, the set of Saturday uh, kind of conventions very well. Let me know how you felt about this one, how you uh, how you did with it difficulty wise and whether you enjoyed it. And, um, and that's that for me. I'll be back tomorrow with the Sunday crossword, a much larger themed uh, crossword, of course. So do join me then. But until that point, please do have an excellent remainder of your Saturday. Take care. Mm-hmm.